Hello, I'm Zach Garcia. Yep, that's me with a perm. Um, this is just what happens when your parents are hairdressers. I was not that geeky, I swear to you. Um, I actually, I was playing bass guitar. Um, I wanted to learn every single Metallica song that there was. Um, this is not a Metallica talk, don't get ahead of me. So uh, let me just paint the scene. This is about 1991. I was a sophomore in high school, and Brian Adams was, was invading us from Canada with his Everything I Do, I Do For You uh, song from the Robin Hood movie. Um, and it was everywhere that summer. You, you couldn't escape it. And uh, another band, Guns N' Roses, was also about to reach, again, don't get ahead of me, uh, was about to release their, uh, their follow-up to their uh, Appetite for Destruction album. There was a kid in my school that got to go to the record store and um, uh, buy it at midnight. I did not buy albums at the record store. Columbia House, man. Um, you guys probably were too. I mean, 12 albums for a penny, how can you beat it, right? So uh, at their height in 1994, Columbia, Columbia House had like 10 million members. So a lot of you people were, were probably um, subscribers as well. But this is not how I got the, or this is how I got the album uh, that changed the world. Um, a little band out of Seattle, uh, the sound was, was, was different for bands coming out of Seattle. And uh, together with producer Butch Vig, uh, Chris Novoselic, Dave Grohl, and um, Kurt Cobain released Nirvana's Nevermind, which is the album for my generation that changed the world. And uh, for, for me anyways, uh, why, when I saw that, that MTV video, I just kind of lost my mind, man. When I saw it Smells Like Teen Spirit on MTV, it was, it was all over. So um, I would put that CD in, and I can't, I, I have to do this. I have to play air guitar when I do this. So um, that, that first guitar riff, that and then the drums would kick in, and it would just kick you in the teeth with an intensity that we had not heard before. Um, it was unlike a sound that, that we were, were used to listening to. Now, this is not high art, okay? <laughs> These guys were not writing uh, uh, crazy melodies and, and complex music here by any stretch of the imagination. This was punk rock, man. So um, what that allowed was for kids to kind of start picking up guitars and drumsticks and forming their own bands. Um, you didn't have to be a polished musician anymore. Um, you could just kind of be who you were. And that was really, really cool to me um, and to my friends. So I grew my hair out. Um, this is about a year later. Um, I, I certainly changed. I started picking up the guitar. I was a bass player, but I played way more guitar um, after hearing some of these songs um, because I could play them. Um, we were all wearing plaid, man. <laughs> Everybody changed the way they are dressed. I don't care if you lived in Phoenix, you were wearing plaid too. Don't deny it. <laughs> so uh, critically, this album was not as uh, well received as you might have thought that it would be. Um, it only received three out of five stars from, from Rolling Stone about two months after the album was released. Um, so, but that didn't matter because kids were eating this album up. They were buying it left and right. And in January of 1992, it knocked Michael Jackson's Dangerous off the uh, Billboard charts a mere five months after it was released. So it was a pretty big deal at the time. Um, you got to also remember that this was supposed to be a little uh, album on a little indie label that was supposed to sell maybe 40 to 50,000 copies, maybe. And it's gone on to sell over 30 million copies worldwide. So 25 years later, we just celebrated uh, September 28th. Uh, we just celebrated the, the 25th anniversary. We're still celebrating and talking about this album. Um, Sirius XM has a channel called Lithium that is named after one of the tracks on the album that celebrates the grunge rock of the era. And Rolling Stone has said no album in recent history has such an overpowering impact on a generation. And of course, that's easy to see now, uh, 25 years later, but, but it's totally true. So if you haven't listened to Nirvana's Nevermind in a while, I highly suggest you give it a, a second first look. Thanks so much.